Welcome to Electron Line. Here we're going to take a look at the operational amplifier equivalent circuit and try to calculate the output voltage based upon the equivalent circuit as well as upon the regular circuit right here. So this is what we call an ideal operational amplifier. We're ignoring what happens internally to the amplifier. And here we're going to take what happens internal to the amplifier and stick it into the equivalent circuit and try to calculate the output voltage in both cases. Over here it's relatively easy. Here we can say that the output voltage, V sub O, is equal to the negative because the source voltage is connected to the inverted terminal right here, the inverting terminal. So it's minus the feedback resistor divided by the input resistor multiplied times the source voltage. So in this case, that would be equal to minus the 20,000 divided by 10,000. We just need to ratio here multiply times the 2 volts, which is equal to minus 4 volts, which means that the gain is minus 2 and the output voltage is 4 volts. What will we get when we use the equivalent circuit right here? Notice what we did. We have the internal resistance right here between the inverting and the non-inverting terminal, which is set at 2 mega ohms. So we have a 2 mega ohm resistor between node 1, which is the node right here, and ground. We have that resistor in there. In addition to that, where we have the output voltage, we have a 50 ohm resistor on the output resistance right here. And then we have this portion right here where we have the gain, the open loop gain, times the voltage difference between the inverting terminal and the non-inverting terminal. Notice that the voltage difference there will be equal to V sub 1 because it's really the difference between ground and V sub 1. We also have a negative sign in there because remember, that V sub D is equal to V2 minus V1. Since V2 is equal to zero, we can then say that VD is equal to minus V1. Okay, with all that in mind, now let's go ahead and try to solve for the output voltage using the equivalent circuit. And to do that, we have to recognize there's two nodes. Also notice we have an input current here, and we have current flowing this way and current flowing this way. So at node one, we can say that I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. I1 is equal to the voltage difference divided by the resistance, which would be V sub S minus V sub 1. So this would be V sub 1 right here. And so we can take V source minus V sub 1 divided by the resistance between, which is 10 kilo ohms, equals I sub 2. I sub 2 would be equal to V sub 1 minus 0, which is ground, divided by the resistance between them, which is 2 mega ohms, plus I sub 3, the current through this branch right here, would be equal to V1 minus output voltage V sub O. So it would be V1 minus V sub O, divided by the resistance, which is 20 kilo ohms. Now we're going to solve this equation for V sub 1, because we then want to plug that into the equation we'll get when we look at node 2. What we're going to do is get rid of the denominators by multi multiplying both sides of the equation by 2 mega ohms, 2 divided by 10 kilo ohms, that would be equal to 200, so we get 200 times V source minus V1 is equal to V1, because the denominator is now gone, plus 2 mega ohms divided by 20 kilo ohms, kilo ohms which is 100 times V1 minus V sub O, or the output voltage. Multiplying through, we get 200 V sub S minus 200 V sub 1 is equal to V sub 1 plus 100 V sub 1 minus 100 V sub O. Moving all the V sub 1s over to one side, we end up with minus 301 V sub 1 is equal to, moving this over, we get minus 200 V sub S minus 100 V sub O. And I'm going to make an approximation. 301 is about the same as 300, so I'm going to make this into a 300 and multiply both sides by negative 1. So we get 300 V sub 1 is approximately equal to 200 V sub S plus 100 V sub O. And then divide all sides by 300, we can say that V sub 1 is approximately equal to two-thirds two-thirds V of the source plus one-third V output. 
So there's a relationship between V1 and V source and V on the output. Now I'm going to do the same on node 2. Node 2 is right here. And we can say that the input current, I3, must equal to the output current, I4, or the current entering the node equals the current leaving the node. I3 can be calculated the same way as we calculated I3 over here. We have V1 minus VO divided by 20 kilo ohms is equal to I sub 4, which is equal to V on the output, minus the voltage at the other side of this resistor, which is AVD, AV sub D. And we divide that by the resistance in between, which is 50 ohms. Now notice, V sub D is really minus v, v sub 1. So I can replace V sub D by V sub 1 and write this as V sub 1 minus V sub O over 20 kilo ohms is equal to V sub O minus 8 times V sub 1 and make that plus because V sub D is the negative V sub 1 divided by 50 ohms. Now I'm ready to get rid of the denominators, multiplying both sides by 20 kilo ohms. I end up with V sub 1 minus V sub O is equal to 20 divided by that. That would be 400, 400 times V sub O plus A, the open loop gain, which is 200,000, 200,000 times V sub 1. Multiplying times 400 on the right side, we get V sub 1 minus V sub O is equal to 400 V sub O plus 80 million V sub 1. Hmm. Some large numbers there. Moving the negative V sub over to the other side. Hmm. Let's see here. I want to solve for V sub 1. So what I can do is I can move V sub 1 to that side, turn the equation around, and yeah, let's do that. So I'm moving the V sub 1 over here. That gives me 79,999,999 V1. And moving this over here, turn the equation around. So that gives me 79,999,991 V1 is equal to, moving this to the other side, minus 401 V sub O. Now, of course, this is really close to 80 million. I might as well call it 80 million, so I can then say that V sub 1 is equal to minus 401 V sub O divided by 80 million. Now that I have that, and I have an equation for V sub 1 on the left side here, I can combine those two equations and put this in the place for, for this right here. So when I combine those two equations right here, I end up with V sub 1 being 2 thirds V sub S plus 1 third V sub O is equal to minus 401 V sub O divided by 80 million. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 to get the 3 over here and multi no, and not both sides, I'm going to move the 3 over here and move the 80 million over here. That gives me the following. It gives me 80 million times 2VS plus VO is equal to the 3 times this gives me minus 1203 V sub O. Let's multiply this through with what's inside here. So we have 8 times 10 to the 7 times 2, which is 16 times 10 to the 7 V sub S plus 8 times 10 to the 7 V sub O is equal to minus 1203 V sub O. Moving this over here and moving that over here, I can then say that 8 times 10 to the 7 V sub O plus 1203 V sub O is equal to minus 16 times 10 to the 7th V sub S. Now combining those, I can say V sub O times 8 times 10 to the 7th plus 1203 is equal to 
minus 16 times 10 to the 7 V sub S. And now we're going to need a calculator. And what do we get? So 16 E to the 7th divided by quantity 8 E to the 7th plus 1203 equals, and we can then say that V sub O is equal to minus 1.99997 times V sub S. And that is what we were after. Wow. What we wanted to do is compare what we got for V sub O over here using this circuit and ignoring the internal action of what's going on inside the operational amplifier to the actual equivalent circuit of the operational amplifier taking into account the internal resistance and current that flows through the operational amplifier. And notice the difference. Here we have V sub O is equal to, and let me write it out, so V sub O is equal to minus 2 times V sub S. That's what we end up over here. This is minus 2 times the V sub S. And here we have V sub O is equal to minus 1.99997 V sub S. I think I got to one too many nines in there. In essence, we got the exact same answer by using the equivalent circuit and taking everything into account what's happening inside the operational amplifier and ignoring what's there and simply taking the simplified circuit like this where we get the output voltage calculated by taking the feedback resistor and the resistance input on the voltage source. And in essence, you get the exact same value. V equals minus 2 times V sub S or V sub O equals, well, something really close to minus 2 times V sub S. So that's where you can see that even though you can use the equivalent circuit, it is perfectly fine to ignore what happens inside the operational amplifier and simply simplify the circuit like that and get virtually the same answer. And that's how it's done.